and the textbook, you are often asked to describe a histogram or summarize a histogram. In this course, we're going to call that all of those things interpreting the histogram. And in this video, we're going to do an example of interpreting a histogram. In the course, you're given some guidelines for interpreting a histogram. So there's some very specific things that you're going to be asked to do when you're going to be asked to interpret the histogram. First of all, so five steps. The first step, identify the approximate range, the essentially the x values of the category that's most frequent and other other frequent categories. Step two, identify the approximate range of the smallest and largest x values in the data set. Step three, identify the approximate range of any atypical or unusual x values in the data set. These are typically, typically called outliers and are values that are separated from the rest of the group. Lastly, step four, if the histogram has an identifiable shape, state whether it's uniform or bell-shaped, symmetric, skewed to the right or skewed to the left, or has no identifiable shape. Step five is not really a separate step. It's just a reminder. For each of steps one, two, three, and four, describe those steps in terms of the problem that's given. So here is a problem. The problem says it's about car discounts. A researcher is interested in studying the gender differences in negotiations and collects data on the prices that men and women pay for new cars. The data are in a file that are, is posted on your Blackboard site. Depicts the discounts, which is the amount of dollars below the list price that 100 individuals received at one car dealership. So what we're going to do is actually examine that histogram. To examine that histogram we need to go to StatCrunch and in StatCrunch we need to load the data. So go to data, load, and from the file, and the file is on my computer. I'm going to choose the file and that file is in a particular folder on my computer. And that file is called Car Discounts. Once I've selected the file, scroll down to the bottom of the page on StatCrunch and load the file. And you'll see the file is loaded into StatCrunch. Now to construct a histogram of these car discounts, discounts being quantitative data, so with quantitative data, you do construct a histogram of that. Go to Graph, Histogram, select the file, select the, the column. We're going to examine discounts and compute. Notice that what StatCrunch does is it automatically constructs a histogram. Now you can change this histogram. This histogram does not look like the problem that was posed in the book. Uh, this is in chapter 5 in your text. So I can change the, the, hist the, look of, the look of this histogram. This histogram, the first bin, starts at 0 and goes up to, it looks like, 250. There's essentially two bins between 0 and 500. So each of those is, has a width of 250 and those are in dollars because it's a discount, but I can change that. If I go to Options and Edit, I can scroll down and say I'd like to start my bins still at zero, but I'd like to have my bin width to be, say, 200 and recompute. What you've done now is you've constructed a histogram of the same data but the bin widths are slightly different. And notice then that the histogram looks slightly different. All right, returning to the, the PowerPoint file, what I've done is I've pasted that histogram of car discounts into 
this uh, into the PowerPoint file. Notice if you're not given the bin width, which often you're not, you don't have it, you can figure it out by looking at, for example, these widths. There's five bins between zero and a thousand. So a thousand, oh, let me go up here where you can see it, a thousand which is the width of those five bins, divided by the five bins, equals 200. So each of these bin widths is 200. The meaning of, of again, the meaning of the histogram, it summarizes how many of the observations, how many of the discounts, and there are a total of 100 discounts. There were, as we go back to the previous slide, there were 54 men and 46 women. So how many of the 100 discounts fall into each of these categories? For example, between, and I'm looking at this bin right here, this would be from 1,500 to it looks like about, or 1,400, where the bin width is 200. 1,500 is in the middle, so that would be from 1,400 to 1,600. Looks like there are about 15 values 15 of the observations are in that bin. So now let's interpret this histogram. Step 1 says identify the approximate range x values of the category that is most frequent and identify other typical or frequent categories for this data. So here's my response in terms of the problem since I'm talking about car discounts. Among these 100 buyers the most common discount and there are actually two of those the common discounts are from 800 to 1,000 and from 14, or, yeah, 1,400 to 1,600. And each of those bins has a total, each of those categories has a total of 15 observations. But there are other common ones. For example, this from going from small to large, from 600 to 800 is fairly common. I would say from 1200 to 1400 is fairly common and these latter two are fairly common. So identify the most common categories but other common categories discounts between 600 and 800, 1200 and 1400, 1600 and 1800, and 1800 and 2000 are also relatively common. All right. Um, step two, identify the approximate range of the smallest and largest x values. It's very important that you, okay, so I'm going to go to change my pen color. Let's look at uh, yellow. It'll show up pretty nicely. Okay, and I just want to emphasize the lar smallest and largest x values. So what we're looking at is we're looking at not which bin has the smallest and largest y values. These are the y's. But which bins and where? What is the smallest and largest x values? So the smallest x value is in this bin right here. So it's from zero to two hundred. The largest bin, the largest x value, falls in this latter bin right over here. So we don't know exactly. This this histogram says there it looks like two observations between zero and two hundred. We don't know, without looking at the data, what the smallest discount is. All we can say is that the smallest discount was between 0 and $200. The largest discount, which falls in this latter category, is somewhere between $2,400 and $2,600. Step 3. Identify the approximate range of any atypical or unusual values in the data set. All right, again, atypical doesn't mean it happens infrequently. Atypical, in the context of statistics, means that it, it basically is separated from the rest of the group. So if I had, if someone had been a, a whiz-bang negotiator and had negotiated a discount A over here, so I had a bar on my histogram way up here, which say was between 3,200 and 3,400. That is separated from the rest of the group. 
but notice with the histogram that's given there there is no value that is separated from the rest of the group there are a few that happen infrequently these latter two don't happen terribly often but they're still within the range of what works of what we're seeing so the response to this third step although there are several discount values that occur infrequently there are no atypical or outlier value discount values finally describing the shape of the histogram Again, if the histogram has an identifiable, an identifiable shape, state whether it's uniform, bell-shaped, or so forth, this histogram does appear to be, oh, sorry, does appear to be relatively symmetric, meaning if you drew a line right up the middle of it, right about there, the left and right halves, and they're not identical, but they're fairly close to one another. So I would argue that this histogram is fairly symmetric. And we already have stated, basically, there are two two categories that are equally frequent. And they're separated from one another. So this would be called bimodal. It means there's two modes, two most frequent categories that are separated from one another. So the response to item four on, a, on interpreting the histogram, the histogram of car discounts is somewhat symmetric and bimodal with mode 1 being between $800 and $1,000, mode 2 being between, as we've already stated, $1,400 and $1,600. And that is in the interpretation when I ask you to interpret a histogram. Complete steps 1, 2, 3, and 4, explaining each one of those in the context of the problem.